Hello friends. Today we will discuss coning of wheels in railways. And before that, I should tell you the wheel and axle arrangement in a railway rolling stock. Now, there is a difference between the wheel and axle arrangement between a road vehicle and a railway rolling stock. And when I say rolling stock, it basically means the coaches, the, the weapons and the locomotive. In case of a road vehicle, as you all know, in case of a car or a truck or a bus, wheel rotates but axle remains stationary. And that is achieved through ball and bearing system between wheel and the axle. But in the case of railways, wheels are rigidly secured or attached to the axle and therefore when wheel rotates, axle also rotates and this is done for a specific purpose and that also tell you okay. There is a gap between, this I will tell you to later, that there is a gap between the wheel flange and side of the rail and because of this gap, there is always a tendency of the axle to move laterally. Oscillation of the axle or sway of in the axle. And because of this reason, there is a possibility that this wheel flange will strike against the side of the rail. And when it moves under say in this direction, then this wheel flange will strike on the side of the rail. And this striking of wheel flange to the side of the rail is called the nosing action. This force is quite heavy. Nosing action of wheel. Striking of wheel flange to the side of the rail. And this force is quite heavy. It can be up to 40% of axle load. And the result of this electrical force is to tilt the rail. And by that force, even the gauge can be widened. Gauge can be wide. Now, if this force is generated here, then there will be reverse force in this direction, that is the action and reaction. And because of this force, there will be heavy pressure on these two contact points. These two contact points, let us say K and K dash. These are the contact points between the axle and the wheel and because of this lateral thrust there will be heavy pressure on these two contact points. And now if the wheel is to rotate about the axle then there will be heavy wear and tear of wheel as well as axle at these two contact points. And to avoid this wear and tear of the axle at these contact points or the pressure at this contact point the wheels are rigidly attached or secured in the axle so that it also rotates and there is no pressure at K or K dash. And finally, some pressure is generated here, which we call the journal. Journal is a part where the axle finally rests. This is the V and an axle arrangement. Now we can say difference between the next arrangement in a road vehicle and a wheel vehicle. Now, why do we keep this gap? Now this gap is kept to avoid contact between wheel flange and side of the rail. Because if this gap is not kept between the wheel flange and side of the rail, then the wheel will continuously move in contact with the rail. And that will cause heavy rubbing action heavy stresses, heavy wear and tear of both wheel flange and side of the rail. To avoid that, a small gap is packed between the inner side of the wheel flange and inner side of the rail. Now I defined in my earlier session the gauge as the distance between, clear distance between running phases of two rails. Similarly, this is the wheel gauge. That is the distance between running phases of 
the flanges and this leaf gauge is slightly less than the trap gauge and this gap is generally that 10 mm on either side. Now because of this gap as I told you there is always a tendency of the axle to move later and to avoid this movement, later movement of the wheel the wheel track is not kept flat but it is also given a slope of 1 in 20 like this 1 in 20 that is 1 in 20 slope is given to the wheel wheel track and that is called Colombo Beats. This is done to avoid the later movement of the wheel on the track because this oscillation, this sway will create discomfort to passengers also and also that will create heavy wear and wear of the rail and side of the wheel flange. To avoid that, we provide coning of the wheels. The objective of providing coning of wheels to reduce the wear and tear of the wheel flange and the rail. Number one, number two, to avoid the possibility of later movement of the axle, and number three, to give a smooth flight. Now, how does it work? What is the theory behind that? Now, on a level track, on a straight track, that is the position of two wheels. Two wheels. There is a gap between the wheel flange and side of the rail. And as soon as this axle moves laterally, let us say it moves in this direction. So what happens? Diameter of the wheel on this rail will slightly increase, and diameter of the wheel on this rail will slightly decrease because of cooling of the wheels, because cone then because the wheel track is not flat. And therefore diameter here will slightly increase on this. And as I told you, wheel and axle are digitally attached, secured, and therefore in one revolution, the distance covered by this wheel will be larger than the distance covered by this wheel. It cannot happen for a long time. Because the wheels are rigidly attached. Because in that case, this wheel will start slipping or sliding on the track. Now, this slipping and sliding is resisted by the sliding force, and as a result, this will come back to its original position. And on a level track, two wheels are dead center on two wheels. So that diameter of two wheels is equal. That is how this gap of the coning of wheel, that is how the coning of wheel prevents the later movement of axle on a straight track. On a curved track, when the Now because of this curve, because of this curve, when the track is laid on a vertical curve, the length of the outer rail is more than the length of the inner rail. The same is angle is theta, and that is the radius of the outer curve. So the length of the outer ray is L1 and length of the inner ray is L. And L2 minus L1 will be R2 minus R1 into theta. That is the length, that is the difference between length of outer ray and inner ray. And this R2 minus R1 is the gauge and therefore the L2 minus L1 is G into theta. And if you keep it in degree, it will be theta into capital G. G is the gauge. Now if you put the value of K 
weights 1.676 meter by 1.4 then this will be almost 0.029 meter per degree per degree of the central angle theta is 1 degree or 2.9 approximately 3 centimeter for every degree of central angle it's a huge amount so what happens that the outer wheel has to travel a longer distance than the inner wheel and that is not possible again because of rigidity of the wheel and axle so in that case what happens that this axle will move slightly outward so the diameter of the outer wheel increases and diameter of the inner wheel reduces so the distance covered by this wheel will be slightly more than the distance covered by the inner wheel and that will reduce the slipping and skidding of the wheels that is how the, the coning helps on vertical curve also but we should remember that because of this rigidity of the wheel base the full advantage of coning of wheels is not achieved on vertical curve because when this axle moves outward, this axle will move inward. Again, because of vegetal increase. And therefore, the full advantage of turning of wheels is not achieved on vegetal curves. And because of this coli, because of because of larger diameter here, when it moves outward, the pressure of outer ring will be more than the pressure of inner ring. Because of only pressure on outer rail is more than that of inner rail inner rail and second the centrifugal force the horizontal component of centrifugal force will try to push the rail out and third, if no base, no base plate is used between the rail and the sleeper, then it can widen the gauge or it can disturb the gauge. Rails can be damaged. Rail seat can be damaged. To avoid these three disadvantages of coning of wheels, the sleepers are also provided with a slope of one point zero, and that is for Engine of sleeper. Engine of sleepers. Providing a slope of 1 in 20 to the rail seat is called the engine of sleepers. Now, in case of a wooden sleeper, the rail seat is cut a slope of 1 in 20 like this. In case of a sleeper, the rail seat is cut like this, and you place the rail here so that it is now at a stop of 1 in 20, which is the stop of the wheel track. In case of concrete sleeper, the sleepers are cast with the slope of 1 in 20 at the rail seat. In case of steel sleeper, they are either banked at the rail seat or the base plate is used which provides a slope of 1 in 20 to the seat. So that is how this coning of wheels and engine of sleepers is done and the basic purpose is to avoid the oscillation in the wheel to have a comfortable so friends, thank you very much for watching this video. In the next session, we will take the next one.